What mm. is it about the Australian Australia and you know the World Champion the Championship? Is it like you know the what cricket Australia does? The if it's professional mm. or is it like you know something in your culture? Never, never want to lose. What is it, Glenn? What? Um, yeah, well, I can only speak. So I, I guess from when we played, it was uh, was always the big games. You, you, that's what you wanted to play to play at the top level against the big. You know, the big teams in the big tournaments, that's what it's all about. Um, you know, once you get to these tournaments, there's no complacency. You back yourself, you go out there and and play the best cricket you can. So I think it's just, you know, Australia have always been big match players, uh, the big match team. They 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 like the, you know, when it when it counts in front of big crowds. And you know, it's uh, you know, this team obviously is different to the era that I played in, but I think it's the attitude that Australians have that they want to get out there and, and just back themselves and, uh, and, and do what they can. Is that something in your culture or is it the how professional things are run there? I think it's something in the culture, to be honest. Australians are very competitive, even from a young age. You know, you get out there and back yourself. And uh, even when you're playing against your mates, it's even more competitive, I think. And, and there's a bit of more uh, banter and, and what have you. So I think it's uh, from a young age, you know, you're competitive at school, playing all different sports, and I think it's just the Australian way. Yeah, because you look at it, you know, you had you won in, in the Indian subcontinent in uh, '87, then in England in '99, 2003 in South Africa, 2007 in the West Indies, and the only place that you didn't win at home, 2015, you won in Australia. So mm. it's like it's complete for you. Like, what's rest? What's rest for Australia to, come, to get? <laughs> oh, well, I think every tournament's different, isn't it? Yeah. Um, different team, different conditions. India's always been um, probably the last frontier for Australia, really. I know they won in in uh, eighty seven, which was an incredible win. Um, yeah. Then we had the the subcontinent World Cup in ninety six, where Australia got so close, and uh, you know Sri Lanka um, played an incredible game in that final, and uh, and and beat us. So I think India's always been the last frontier, really. In 2004, in Test cricket, uh, it took us a long time to win, um, and and that was not a bad Australian team that we had then. So I think, really, if if they can some if they can win uh, this tournament, it uh, it will be a I think will be a, a huge feather in the cap for the Australian team. And talk about you, Glenn. You know, you were part of four World Cups, and you won three out of the four. Uh, mm. And uh, you know, the interesting thing is you're the leading wicket taker in World Cup. And arguably the best fast bowler in history of uh, cricket, uh, you know. And but playing in these different conditions, how does it? What does it take? You know, in, in India, in South Africa, to mm. be so formidable and be the best bowler, successful bowler in the World Cup. Well, I think yeah. It's I, I don't know if the, I'm the best bowler. I've got the most wickets. Um, so maybe it's because I played at quite a few tournaments. Yeah, played four World Cups. But I think to be a to be classed a, a, a great bowler is to be able to adapt to all different conditions. You know, you've, you can't just bowl in your own conditions and underperform everywhere else. It's the same for the batsman. Um, you've got to learn to adapt to the conditions and the team that does that the best is always going to be a tough one to beat. And uh, so, yeah, so I think, um, you know, you've got Mitchell Stark who potentially could, could if he had a great World Cup, could, you know, take over that mantle as leading World Cup uh uh, wicket taker, um, so, but yeah, to beat India in India is is as tough as it as it comes. But, and I think back, you know, probably that era that I was lucky enough to play in, pitchers in Australia all had a different character. So you got to learn and adapt to play in different conditions in your own country. Now, wickets in in each country are very similar. You know, in Australia, the pitches are, are quite similar all around the country. So, which I think is a negative. For uh, for teams, they don't you know learn to adapt, and I think probably even more so when teams travel these days, the home team dominates it. That's probably more in the longer version of the game. The shorter version of the game, it's it's totally different now. You know, when I remember when I first started, you could score two hundred runs and defend that. Now you score 300, 330, and you think, oh, I wonder if I've got enough. So it's a different mentality of the batting. The T20 format that's come in, you know, the IPL style tournaments has had a big impact on scoring rates. So I think uh, we've already seen 
Um, what one score of 400 plus 100. this tournament already? Uh, you saw New Zealand chase down 280 and and was incredible. Um, so yeah, so I think the scoring rates uh, and the way the batsmen approach it are, is so different these days, which you know makes the game different as well. So you mentioned Mitchell, uh, Mitchell Stark, and then you talk about you know the other players, but you know there's a lot of injury concerns, and I'm gonna as Great that I'm going to ask you this question because you've never missed a match barring that one match, the Ashes Mount, and it was not because of anything else. You were like warming up and there's a cricket ball behind you and you kind of slipped on yeah. that. And that's the only thing. How, so you did, didn't did miss a single cricket match. You were always fit. But now you talk about Stark, mm. about Bumrah. Bumrah, yes, the body and his action. But around yeah. the world, no fast bowler who's been able to maintain his fitness like you have. What's the secret behind that, Glenn? Um, well, I think back when I played, we had an off season. You know, you had a, a chance each year for for a couple of months, if you know, six to eight weeks, where you could actually not bowl, get into the gym, get the strength and back into your body. Um, and I think that's very important. Uh, I had a very quite a stress free action, which allowed me to a little bit different. Uh, you look at someone like Jimmy Anderson, Stuart Broad. They know their body so well. They only play one format, so they've got time to recover and put that strength back in. Now it's it's nearly 12 months a year. You're playing international cricket, then you're off playing the IPL, you're off playing other tournaments. For a fast bowler, you have to really decide what you play. Because if you keep, and I've always said, if you keep playing um, week in, week out as a fast bowler, year after year, sooner or later, you are going to break. It's like driving a car. If you don't fill it up with fuel, sooner or later you're going to run out of fuel. And I think that um, is the the nature of the beast being a fast bowler. I said I, I had a very stress-free action, so I was probably a little bit luckier than most. Um, you look at someone like Jasprit Bumrah, um, incredible bowler, but he's so explosive right at the, <coughs> excuse me right at the end um, as he delivers the ball, as he powers that last few steps into the crease and then through the crease. So he puts quite a lot of stress on his body. Um, so he needs time to recover and, and get strength back into his body. And, you know, it's a shame that he was injured, but he's coming back now and fingers crossed he'll, he'll be good. So it's the nature of the beast being a fast bowler. Some bowlers less stressful, others are more, but you do need a break, I think, at least once a year to put a bit of strength back into your body. Is Cricket Australia addressing that in the sense, are they like looking after their bowlers, like, you know, trying to make sure they don't play yeah. a certain championship, league championships around the world, IPL included, or is it like nation first, World Cups, from, you know, importance given to yeah. World Cups or World Test Championship? How is Cricket Australia handling that? Yeah, I think you look at the fast bowlers these days with the way they, um, you know, horses for courses is a lot spoken about a lot and they, you know, for a test series, it's very rare for a fast bowler to play every game. So they'd sort of, which I'm I'm not a huge fan of because, you know, I, I like to get into a zone and then just maintain that. And I think bowlers can do that. And if you have a break of, you know, a week, 10 days, you just drop off a bit. So um, it's it's a little, yeah, it's, it's a lot different these days, but they're trying to manage that by not playing every game. Um, and then it's up to the individual whether they go and play the IPL or other sort of T20 style tournaments. And yeah, they can't stop players from doing it. Um, so I think it's up to the individuals. And I know, uh, you know, Mitchell Stark has taken the option not to go and play just to, I think, to help him maintain his, uh, you know, his strength, his fitness, his uh, international, uh, be, be prepared for international matches to play at his peak. Right. So just coming back to the World Cup, Glenn, you won, you won three World Cups. Hmm. Which amongst them would you say was your favourite? And um, it's hard to choose a favourite. Um, you know, the one in one in ninety nine. You know, ninety six. It was tough. You know, being runners up there, we wanted to make amends in ninety nine. We started poorly. We got into a position where we had to win every single game. Where we lost to New Zealand. We lost to Pakistan. Um, so yeah, and uh, and to sort of get across some incredible games, you know that that match against South Africa, you know that even 
the last of the the Super Sixes or whatever they were called back then. And then the the semi final match was incredible to get across that, uh, and then to to win the final uh, was very very special. That that match at Edge Edge Baston would probably go down as one of my you know all time favourite cricket matches that I played in, not just uh, one day. So ninety nine was special in that respect. Then to go over to two thousand and three. Um, you know, we had a good team to go through undefeated, um, especially, you know, it was, it was, you know, it was tough losing Warney, you know, when, when Warney, um, got banned for that 12 months and, and couldn't play in the world cup, uh, that was tough, but the other players stepped up and, you know, to win in, in 03 undefeated. And then obviously 07 West Indies, we not only went through undefeated, um, in every game, we weren't really challenged in any game. And and for me personally, to finish my career on a high, to win the World Cup, and that was my last match for Australia, uh, was very special too. And you've, uh, you've played under two captains, uh, Steve Waugh and Ricky Ponting. Two very different characters, one cool as ice. Uh, yeah. Ricky Ponting, never afraid to call a spade a spade, ready for a fight. Yeah. How, how yeah. do you compare these two captains? You know, Steve Waugh was like this ice man, and the other one was like... Ready to have a go? Oh, uh, yeah, they are who they are. And uh, I love playing under both of them. Um, they, they both had different teams, without a doubt. But, uh, yeah, they both let their natural, their true character come out. Uh, and that's why Stephen was. He, he was, you know, he didn't want to give anything away. He was in control. It was this, whereas, you know, and, and yeah, would do anything. You know, would, uh, you know. You, know, you saw him play injured, got a hundred, and you know he just do, yeah, you know, he would run through a brick wall just to, uh, you know, to to win a game or to do well for his team. So you have a captain, both captains lead by example, without a doubt. Then you've got Rick, who's, uh, yeah, he's he's a quality sportsman as well in in all yeah all different sports, but just has that love and passion for the game. Wears his heart on his sleeve. There's no doubt about that. He's <laughs> He's not. He's not going to back down. I think he actually uh, sort of. He was uh, cooled down a little bit at the older he got. So uh, when he got captain, I think uh, yeah, he he did an incredible job. There's no doubt about that. Both those guys did. Both totally different styles, but two of the greats for Australia. Probably uh, you did play under Tubby as well uh, in the nine thing. So he was also a bit different. But uh, uh, how would you, how would you compare him with these two captains? Yeah, no, Tub was very astute, very, you know, just tactically very good with the game. Um, he grew up in an era where Australia wasn't probably as as strong all the time, going through, growing up through well, uh, AB, when AB was captain. And, and there was, you know, there was a few issues, but AB and, and Bob Simpson turned the team around and started playing some great cricket. And, and Mark Taylor came up through there. So he's he's done the hard yards. But Tubb was a very astute cricket, you know, captain, uh, respect, led by example as well. So, yeah, I, I was lucky to play under four uh, Australian captains and, uh, yeah, huge respect for all of them. They took the team from a, a, a certain spot and left it in a better position, you know. Um, so, yeah, it's... Uh, but they all very strong characters, very strong personalities, and they led the team, yeah, the way they want to one or two, and, and I guess that's why it was successful, strong characters. Yeah, you talk about Tubby and uh, World Cup. You know, this morning I was watching, I don't know which channel he's on, he's commentating, and he said, everything looks fantastic for Australia, but the fact that Ash Nega is not there to help Zampa would be a bit of a uh, negative. Mm -hmm. He said, you know, then it's got, it's got to be Maxwell who's got to play a role, Labuschagne probably, you know, trying to like, you know, bowl a bit of spin. What's your take? A, a bit of a bit of a concern there, as far as uh, the spin department is concerned. Um, yeah, I think Zamp has done really well. There's no doubt about that. So it's great to have him there. But you look at the other bowlers in Hazelwood and Stark and Cummins. You've got three senior bowlers that know the game very, very well. Um, you know, I think uh, Josh Hazelwood's done well, especially in the shorter format in India too. So they've got that. Um, that confidence, yeah. You know, Pat Cummins a great bowler, and Mitchell Stark, he's just a wicket taker. When when he's on song, in the one day format, he's you know he's got the X factor. So you need him. Um, so if he if he performs well, if yeah, you know, I think Mitchell Stark's a, a big key to that Australian team. So if he performs well, I think he can carry the team, and, and they won't miss 
that you know that extra spin option. So and, and Glenn Maxwell's done well, um, and a few other boys can bowl bits and pieces and uh, yeah, see how it goes. Well, you don't see that a bit of a concern the spin department, especially in Indian conditions. Like no, it's rare. Um, no, I think they've got the bowling attack to win this World Cup, but they they all have to fire. You know, I, I think Josh Hayeswood's always consistent, going to be get in the right area, knows his game so well. Pat Cummins, and it's Mitchell Stark, and and you know Mitchell Stark was what was he um, player of the tournament in 2015 when Australia won that World Cup. He to me is a, a massive key. If he is bowling while swinging that ball, he can take wickets early up. If he takes wickets in his first spell, two or three wickets, you know, Australia's right on top. So, yeah, I think um, if he bowls well, I don't think they'll miss that uh, that second spin option. All right, last two questions, Glenn. One thing is, you talk about Mitchell Stark being the X factor for the, as far as bowling is concerned. For the batsman, do you think uh, someone who knows the conditions, I'm not going to put any name, but who would you think would be the key uh, for Australia? Yeah, well... Yeah, you know, you've got uh, you know you've got the big names there in Warner and uh, and Smith, and they they both they have to play a, a big role. There's no doubt about that. Dave Warner's form looks like he's been okay recently, which is which is good. Steve Smith, um, I think he can lift for the big games. Uh, Mitchell Marsh is the one to me. He's such a powerful player, opening the bats bats batting there. If he um, hangs around and gets a bit of form. He can he can be very destructive. We saw Manus Lubbershane, who wasn't even in the squad, come in for another injury, and all of a sudden he's played incredibly well. So, yeah, I think um, you know you've got the names in Warner Smith Lubbershane. You need those guys to perform. Mitch Marsh is the one. If he comes off, he can do something special. Graham Maxwell as well. He's always had that X factor, but I'd like to see him come off a little bit more often. Um, you know, this is his opportunity. So, and Cameron Green, I'm a big fan of. So they've got um, they've got sort of three quality all rounders there. And if those guys fire too, that can make a big difference. And um, prediction, you know, four semi finalists. Yeah, no, I, I sort of made a prediction beforehand. I thought the four semi-finals would be Australia, India, Australia, England, and Pakistan. After England's first game, and I, you know, I thought New Zealand, they always do well. There's something special about them, but I wasn't sure. But after that first game, you know, that was an incredible first first game by them. They had a you know a, a very comfortable win against the quality England team. So yeah, it's going to be interesting. South Africa have, have sort of turned things around. So I'd sort of thought New Zealand, South Africa may not be in the running. Um, and I probably gave England a little bit more credit than maybe they deserve. So I still think it'll be India, Australia, um, Pakistan, I think can do anything, but they can just as just as easily have a horrible game. Um, yeah. And then uh, I thought... Then it's to me, it's out of England, New Zealand, South Africa, and you know, you never write the New Zealanders off. There's something about them. I, I thought they were very unlucky not to win that previous World Cup. You know, every in the final, just things went against them, and you know, they to me, they deserve to win that, but the English got across the line. So I think in New Zealand will be hungry, they'll, um, so yeah, they could be the dark horse. So I might, uh, I'll throw the Kiwis in as well. So India, Australia. New Zealand, and then it's out of Pakistan and England. Right, last question. Am I, I mean, I'll have to have to ask this question. Am I a Pace Foundation? You've been heading it. Yep. Indian fast bowling, the future. You see, you think it's it's getting better and better. Uh, you know, our Pace department. Oh, without a doubt. You know, I think it's having a, a big impact fast bowling right through India. You look at the Indian um, Test team at the moment; they've got a quality lineup. You know, the fast bowlers that India are producing. I think they've never produced them the way they have in the in the past. So that that's brilliant. The fact that um, uh, we're over doing uh, our work with the MRF Pace Foundation, been going for what is it now 30, 36 years, um, really focusing on on you know developing fast bowlers. We've got some great talent there. There's a few guys on the edge. Um, you know, we've seen Prasid Krishna um, doing okay. We've seen um, uh, Avish Khan. Um, get a little the odd chance here or there as well. Um, so yeah, so like there, there's plenty of talent going going through, but when you've got a set bowling attack like the Indian team has, sometimes it's hard. With the Australian team, when I played, they said it was harder 
to get out of the team, <laughs> get dropped from the team once you're in there and you're performing. So, yeah, there's there's no shortage of quality young fast bowlers coming through. We've seen it in the IPL ranks, but uh, to be involved with the MRF Pace Foundation is something I'm very proud of. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's um, fingers crossed we can uh, have a few of our boys having more of an impact at uh, uh, international level. Great. Thanks so much for your time, Glenn. Thanks so much.